Hey folks, Mark Scroggins with Scroggins Law Group, and we are back for another edition of the Reclamation Transformation. And today, I am really excited uh, to have Reverend Donald Parrish with us. How are you today? I'm doing good, Mark. Thank you for having me. You bet. So this is uh, exciting for me. Donald also went to the University of Texas, which always exactly get the horns up there. Absolutely. Which always makes me happy. But uh, we had a little crossover uh, time there. But one of the things that that Donald and I were talking about is uh, we'll get into the importance of having, you know, fathers in the home and, and not just in the home, but engaged Absolutely. with their kids. But you really had everything with, well, I'll tell you what, let me just stop for a second and right. ask you to kind of introduce yourself and tell a little bit about what you do. And then I'll, all right, I'll quit slobbering all over you. Oh, well, we're great. I'll tell you what, um, that's dangerous uh, uh, to <laughs> to to uh, ask a uh, a black preacher to to give you a short synopsis about what we do. Uh -huh. But but we, we <laughs> but th there's no organ present, and so I think I'll be okay. I think there we I go. Can, I can keep it brief. There we go. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, um, we we did an event. Now, actually, five years ago, uh, we did an event. Hard to believe. Uh, I know. Um, called Breakfast with Dads. Right. That garnered all this national attention um, that basically we, we put a call out on social media asking for 25 men who were willing to come to Dade Middle School to be a stand-in father for the kids' dads who couldn't make it. Right. And that thing just took a life of its own. And How many uh, people did y'all have show up? We had over 1,000 men contact me. Oh, my gosh. Um, 600. We were able to get 600 through the background check, and so we actually had right at 600 that showed. So everyone who completed the background check actually showed. And then we have, we also had some plainclothes police officers there. So I had a little bit over 600, uh, because I had, because I was just so concerned, uh, at, at that. And I was like, you know, and I'm always, I'm not new to working with young people. Um, right. I've been working with young people since I graduated college and, uh, we have been doing this work loosely since 2000, but had not formed an organization and, Really never wanted to form an organization because of all of the work it takes and on the business side, trying to get sustainability and infrastructure and all those things. Right. But that event forced us to uh, form a steady hand. And, and now we're branching out across the nation and doing a lot of neat and cool stuff. But we start off only primarily working with boys. Now we work with boys and girls, uh, kindergarten all the way up through college. Like, it's it's just crazy how this thing has grown. Well, so how did, how did the focus get to be on getting men involved uh, with kids? Well, so for me, the, that, that's a very personal uh, struggle. I come from a good, uh, I mean, a line of just strong men. I am I am the fourth straight pastor in my family, like oh my direct, blood, black, direct bloodline. Like, right. So my, you're talking my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father, and now myself. Um, it's not a family business, to my knowledge, None of us wanted to do what our fathers did, but right. the but the call kind of came, and right. so, um, and so it's. I went to college and thinking that everybody kind of had this because in my world, that's what I saw. I saw strong fathers everywhere I looked. I mean, both set of my grandparents have been were married fifty plus years, like until right. death did them part. All my uncles were married. Like, you know, I, I come from, my parents are still married to this day. And so I, 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 all I saw was just strong men. I had male teachers. I had, I had male principals. I had, I had all these men around me. I get to the University of Texas and I start meeting my friends from, um, from Dallas and from different parts of the, of the, of the state. Right. That was not their story. And, um, it began to really resonate with me, Mark, when my father called one time. And some of my friends are in the room, and they were like, "You know your dad," and I laughed. Oh my gosh! I laughed. I was like, "What do you? What do you mean? Yeah." And they're like, "No, no, but seriously, like you, like you actually talk to your dad, like, like, like your dad, yeah, like, 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 what are y'all talking about?" And and we just began to dive deeper into our and in, into our stories, and and I was like, "Man, this is." This so is you crazy. started seeing this in college, just through I, these I started, conversations, correct? And I didn't. I didn't know I was going to end up in this work, but it but it bothered me. It but that's did. where it started. Yeah, it bothered me. It didn't, and and I was and I remember telling my dad. I I actually remember, uh, and I've said this uh, to my parents, and so if they see this, they'll they'll be able to echo this. I actually called my parents and thanked them my freshman year of college for how they raised me, and I apologized. 
for how I acted when in, in high school mm -hmm. based on what I saw and the experiences that people I was in, I was down in school with and how they came up and what they did not have right. and what I rebelled against that my parents provided me. It's funny. I have a, I have a similar story uh, like that. My dad, I remember telling me, gosh, I was probably 16 or something like that. He said, you know, you're going to get to college and within a couple of years, you're going to realize that your mother and I are not nearly as stupid as you think we are. <laughs> Have you, you know, what, uh, is it in a parent handbook somewhere? Because apparently I, it is. <laughs> apparently it is. Because I had, I didn't do that my freshman year, but I think it was my junior year. Yeah. We were all, uh, gosh, where we, we were at Casa Acapulco down in. Oh, yeah. Uh, you remember that? Oh, yes, down sir. in Austin. Yeah. And, uh, and sitting there and telling them, you know, it's amazing. Y'all are a hell of a lot smarter than, than I realized. How y'all managed and paid right. bills. And I mean, because college is the first time you have to do that. When you move off campus. Right. Right. I, I was in Jester. I, I love Jester. Right. If, if I had my drugs, I never would have left Jester East. I mean, right. I even got so slick, man, where I'm not going to nerd out on UT so much. But for all our non, uh, non UT fans out there. But right. I even, one semester, I had all my classes in Jester. So that was like the. That was, oh, my God. I had Tuesday, Thursday classes only in Jester. That was the best semester ever. I Ever. bet. Oh, that was amazing. I remember getting to where I did a Tuesday, Thursday semester. Oh, man. So, so that always had that four-day weekend. Oh, man. That was, oh, that was that beautiful. That worked for me. And oh, then sometimes, you know, I couldn't make Tuesdays or I couldn't make yeah. Thursdays. You know? <laughs> so, no comment. No, yeah. no, no, no comment. I'm not going to speak up. So <laughs> it's, but I, I remember having that conversation and, yeah. and telling yeah. them that, wow, you know, y'all really knew a lot. And yeah. because, you know, everybody goes through, the, oh, parents are so out of touch. They don't understand, you know, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And I didn't realize I had that the same experience where, you know, my mom and dad were were married until my dad died. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and he was a really strong, strong influence in my life. And yeah. I was really, really close to him. Yeah. And so that was a big, big impact on me. And it still is to this day. And he's been he, he died over 20 years ago now, mm. you know, and so it is still a big impact on me. But. That is one of the reasons that your story is is so interesting to me. There have been these these studies that have come out of late that have talked about the impact on children coming up in single family homes and not yeah. just single family homes, but specifically where there is no relationship with a Correct. father figure in their life. Correct. And so when you kind of reached out and and put this uh you know breakfast with dads together and everything started from there i find that incredibly um forward thinking and and just what an incredible thing to be doing well i i think that you you kind of know some things and i didn't know any science behind it i didn't know any stats i didn't know any right. data i just knew that the principal at the time was like we just can't seem to get fathers engaged. Um, and, and this was the this was the principal where I'm at, sorry at, at Dade Middle School at Dade Middle School. Uh -huh. okay. And they had done the event a couple years uh, um, prior, and she was just like Reverend Paris, we just we just can't get guys to come. Like we just you know so you know will, will you just? And I said you know I know a lot of people. I can get twenty five guys to show up. Like that that's that's literally how you know I was like you know let me just whip out my Facebook. At my LinkedIn and right, hey, can twenty five guys and I had I had a good friend of mine. Uh, she shared on her page, and it just literally took a like. We had even guys came from as far as Chicago to attend. Oh my god! Yes, yeah, we had we had uh, people running for office. We had athletes. We had politicians. It, I mean, it was it was absolutely insane, and and it all came together within a week. L literally, uh, we uh, had a conversation. That Wednesday, by that thir the event was that Thursday, and so yeah, just so, a week later. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, no plan. And so we actually shut down DIC's website for like three days because so many men were trying to register, and that it, that it, it it backed up uh, their website. And so and so yeah. And so my my wife will tell you for about a two week period for that week prior. And then the week, even a week after the event, and then once a month later, once the media caught on what happened, my phone would ring 24 hours a day. Like, because people were calling from other countries. Oh, uh, my goodness. Uh, other time zones. Um, you know. So where where all, you were, uh, 
you were on uh, a bunch of big TV shows. Yes, sir. Uh, the, probably the the most famous one that we did an in person interview uh, with, and not just like a write up or story, was uh, exactly. I was on, on Fox and Friends. Like right. fun, fun, fun party. Uh, 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 a trick I tell people: just go to um, uh, any web browser, put in six hundred men, right, and a picture of me will pop up. So I'm known as a six hundred man guy, you know, right. um, because that either that interview will pop up or um, USA Today um, had had a sub a subdivision called Humankind. Yep. I don't know if it's still in existence now. I think it's just all USA Today now. Right. They did a write up on it and like a little photo montage. Right. And on last I checked on Facebook, that one video has thirty point six million views just on Facebook. That's crazy. So I stopped. I, I was at one point. I was trying to track it. I was trying to track Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Once it got to fifty million views, I, it was beyond my ability to 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 kind of track it. And then people started instead of getting direct source information from me, they were you know taking stuff from other articles and stuff like that. And so right. it just took a life. It just has a life on its own. It still bounces up. Every time school starts back, right. it bounces up again. Right. Uh, every time there's a summer break, it and it's like, and I get contacted afresh again by people who are saying, "Wait a minute, I think you're the guy," you know, because I didn't build it around me. Right. And so I, so even on the video, any video you see of, any pictures you see of it, right, uh, came from from myself on camera, and then we, I did have a friend of mine um, who who agreed to come and take pictures. Right. And so, um, but those are the only images of, a, of of the event. But we actually have, like, I went, I think I went live on Facebook doing the event because I just could not believe how many, you know, how many men actually showed up. I mean, it was, it was, it was unreal. Why do you think that resonated so heavily with so many men? I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge difference from saying I'm going to get 25 guys there Correct. to having 600, I mean, in, in a week. I, I think, honestly, uh, Mark, I think that, because I've had time to, 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 to think about this now, right? We've been at this now for five years. And honestly, um, it was a move of God, and I have to give God credit. Right. It, it, he, he did it, uh, and he, he was totally in control. But secondly... And I, I try to explain this to um, other people. I get I get asked all the time by churches, by other organizations, even by some national organizations. I've met with leadership, and they have asked me, trying to pick my brain, how do you get men involved consistently? Because I'm talking to people who have million dollar budgets cannot seem to get men involved. Right. And and I, I you know the old expression, the game is sold and not told. Right. right. But but I don't I don't prescribe to that because I know they're not willing to do what it takes. And, 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 but in dealing with men, you get, you need, the ask needs to be direct and it needs to be simple. Men, we, we, we like to know exactly what we're walking into. Right. We, yeah, we don't like true. to be strung along. We don't like to be nickel and dimed. Tell me up front. My yes is yes. My no is no. Right. So we kept the ask very simple. Hey, just show up and, and share a breakfast with a kid. That, that was it. And, 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 and because it, it it got so once so that Wednesday, I, I put I put the post out. By that Saturday, Dallas Morning News contacted me and asked me if they could put this on their on their back page. Right. And so I'm thinking, oh great, you know we may we may have a hundred guys show up. Right. But this is awesome. Sure, put on put on your back page, and it just, I mean. Took off. Uh, I mean, my, and and I don't know. I I did not do one radio ad. I did not do one TV ad. Matter of fact, um, we had a TV journalist who was there. He could not convince his station uh, to cover it, so he just came on his own. Uh, you know, he was like, wow. I, and he was like, I tried to tell my station and my program manager. You know, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but if you you go back and watch the video, he, he's on the video, and uh -huh. he's like, I tried to tell him that this was going to happen, and they. Nobody would believe me. So by that Tuesday, once we start having some uh, Dallas Cowboy people and people from other states, I said, I got to get some media coverage or something. And again, I'm just thinking, it, had I been thinking this is going to be launching in my organization, I may, I probably would have screwed it up. And But it, it just happened so organically. I was thinking, well, this would be great to get some eyes on the school. Right. You know, the school is doing some great things. Maybe we get some resources in there for the kids. Right. And so, but I couldn't get anybody to bite. But I think the ask was so simple. And it was so direct and it was no string attached. But also, secondly, 
within my peer group and within my sphere of influence, I've been doing the work already. So they know, okay, Donald, you know, Donald's kind of known for doing this. We had already been doing college tours. We'd already been speaking at schools. We'd already been doing mentoring work. Right. Uh, just not in an organization. I was just kind of doing them on, on, on my free time, you know? And so um, I had enough buy-in from, from my, from my friend group that once they saw it and shared it, then their friends and their friends saw it and shared it, their friends and their friends saw it and shared it. I tell people all the time, I think I'm the reason why Zuckerberg changed the algorithm on Facebook. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because you can't get that. I mean, it all happened organically. Like right. you have to pay for that kind of outreach, uh, you know, you know, right. and, you know, these days, but uh, yeah, right. it, it just, it just blew up. That's crazy. Yeah. So what kind of impact did you see that have on these kids? Man. So, um, let's just go for the remainder of the school year. The, the those boys, the, the kids had no idea. Okay. They, they had they had no idea this was happening. Um, I talked to the principal, and she was like, "Man, listen, we're gonna get the, we're gonna forget just the kids who signed up. We're gonna get all our boys into the auditorium because because once I was able to show her this is a response, right? She was like, okay, and so." We we um and so we we got all we got all the boys there and um we had some people step up like Black Panther the, the movie the first one the first Black Panther had just come out right um we had a guy step up um and um paid for uh, a private screen of Black Panther oh that's and, awesome and so what I did was so we did we created something called Be the Hero because I wanted our kids to. I, it's great that you get all this tension and all this kind of stuff, but also be be a part of the solution if you can, right? Right. So we we did something called Be the Hero Day, where we went and, and built out a food pantry in in a in a local church there in, in South Dallas. Right. They that's that's all they thought they were doing. They just thought we were coming together and we're going to do a food pantry. When we got back to the school, we had we had the same buses that the Cowboys ride in ride on uh, to go on game days. Mm -hmm. uh, th that company uh, um, at the time. Um, he donated those buses and we took three or four charter buses worth of boys to go see uh black Panther. We had, t had t-shirts made for them and all that. Oh, very and, cool. Oh yeah. And they, 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 they got there to, you know, order popcorn and all that. I mean, it, it was, it was just great. And so just that residual impact and what I saw just, and we did little stuff like that throughout the year, but it just, it got me to thinking, huh, maybe what I'm doing with mentoring can work on a larger scale if we can have this same principle. Let's kiss, keep keep it simple, simple stupid, stupid, right? Yeah. Right. If we can just keep that same kiss mentality, right? And it's so funny because you're you're, you're a business owner, you're a businessman, and right. you know, uh, you, you see that in trends like raising canes, right? You know, the ra raising canes, like they told them it'll never work. You know, right. you're only selling one thing, it, it'll never work. Right. Right. And and. And I'm stuck on um, food that built America on, on the History Channel. Man, I'm I'm watching that man, and I'm Google like I'm watching it like it, it's almost like I'm back in school, man. I'm I'm researching, <laughs> I'm I'm fact checking because it, it for me in my context, um, the simpler you can keep it, right, and that direct ask, right, then the, I think the more you're gonna have some disappointments. You have some people that show up and don't get it. Uh, or they show up with other intentions. I mean, that's just that's just part of doing business. Of course, yeah. But um, but it, man, you know, you 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 source a hundred a hundred mentors, even if you get three that 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 are with you for the whole school year, that's still a win. Yeah, absolutely. And and so you got to be willing to put the work in and to meet thousands with the hopes of gaining ten. Sure. And you got to be willing to do that. Yeah, and and you do that part, the residual impact you see in the life of a kid is just uh, tr uh, tremendous. And I, I don't want to go on too long, but I, I do have to tell you this one story. This is what started us working with girls. And and I, I learned the impact that men and women not only impact boys, but also young girls. Um, had a principal uh, of a, a local elementary school um, contact me had a sixth grade girl came to school and said she was suicidal. Mark, I couldn't say suicide when I was six. I had no idea what it was. Like I wouldn't even think at right. six about hurting myself. That's crazy. And so what had happened is they had already convinced me <clears throat> to work because I was dead set working against we're, we're working with anybody of high school boys. I was still trying to figure out what am I going to do with this. I didn't even have a name for it. Right. Right. 
all these calls are coming in and 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 just some calls you just can't say no to right like it's sure. just you know and i was like the school is right down the street from me like like come on up and so i was like i tell you what give me 10 second grade boys she said that's perfect because these are the this age group that's giving us the most problem so we agree with second grade we agreed on second grade boys wow these some of these boys are setting the bathroom trash can on fire they were they were they were they were on during recess they were trying to sneak off property and 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 just roam the neighborhood just just stuff that you wouldn't expect an eight year old kid to even to even be thinking about right and right. the school was trying to deal with all these issues and so that girl was the um uh younger sister of one of the boys who are in our program and so the principal reached out to me and the community um uh, liaison and was like we see what you're doing with her brother is there anything you can do to help with this with this girl? You know, right. because, and that's what started me thinking, man, we got to be, you know, we got to be willing to do this. But the men who are coming on campus, those boys' behavior changed so drastically in, in that year. And this is all, you know, pre-pandemic. Right. And in and, and that year. And, I, man, we were showing up with double cheeseburgers. Double cheeseburgers and, like, a little small, a small drink. Right. But it, it, <clears throat> if the boys knew we were coming... The the teacher said it started being that day of their behavior, just it went from outlandish to in control. Then it went the week that they know they're coming. So then some of my mentors just started going every week, right? And just just having that thirty minute lunch period uh, with with the kid and just seeing that kid grow and develop and become verbal and but from the thing I was most proud of their referrals and their the you know the clash on disruption went down right all because they felt like i have somebody who just genuinely cares about me right it, i mean it's we, we we make this way more difficult than what it is we all have a same basic need to be loved and cared for no matter what age you are right we all want to feel that but especially for a kid who that who can't verbalize that yet right and so men are so very vital, uh, men and women are so very vital to step in. Even those of uh, um, men and women who are raised like us, I bet right now, Mark, if you think about your your existence, you've seen, you could probably name 10 or 15 men and women who, although you had a solid foundation, still poured into you, who you can give credit for, you know, helping you be successful now. Absolutely, yeah. But imagine if you didn't have that the, just that see those are vitamins right imagine right. if you'd have the meat and potatoes so to speak at home right we now have a whole society a whole culture uh, generations who have not had that meat and potatoes at home and right. so they're having to survive on on that vitamin and so it's 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 frustrating yeah so as you know you know what what i do is is family law oh. and so one of the things oh, that that you have all the time is you know child custody matters, Correct. whether it's, you know, inside a marriage or outside of a marriage, you know, whether it's a divorce or a suit effect and parent child relationship. And so I start wondering what, what could be done from a legal standpoint to mm -hmm. really try to promote, mm -hmm. uh, to really try to promote that situation mm -hmm. where, um, you know, the, the man is going to be, more involved. I mean, so typically what you have is one one person gets named primary, okay. so to speak. All that means is they get the uh, exclusive right to establish the, custodial primary, rights. Uh -huh. the primary domicile of the children. Okay. okay. And so when you have somebody that's got a, a standard possession order, that's basically every first, third, and fifth weekend. Gotcha. And, you know, anyway, uh, I don't want to get into all of that here. But what you have a lot of the time is the acrimony between the parents is so great that you have yeah. a, that that non-primary parent yeah. just yeah. kind of drops off. Yeah. yeah, you know, and there has been it seems to me in the media for a generation now there has been a justification that that men weren't really needed. Yeah, you know, and I don't know where all that came from. Well, actually, I, I've got some ideas on where it all came from. Yeah, but uh, it's unfortunate. Now there's getting, you know, there's some backlash absolutely from it, and that's where I was talking about with these studies. So I mean, 
I start wondering what can we do or what could I do, you know, from someone inside the legal field to try to make sure that we don't run into that problem and people aren't chased off. Um, and I don't, I don't have an answer for that. Well, I don't I, know. What I, I tell is. you what, um, adults have to be adults. Right. I, 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 I started fielding phone calls. Once we started working in other schools, um, and I, I broadcast a lot of what we do on social media, but a lot of what we do, I don't say I don't say anything about because right. I learned. Um, I had a mother once. We were working at another school. This is probably about a year or two later, and she called me and said, "I just want you to know that my child's father is mentoring a kid uh, at the same school that his kid goes to, and." He's not doing what he what he he needs to do uh, in his own kid's life, and I said, "Well, maybe this could be his path to redemption." Right. I said, "We have to be." I said, "I don't know the circumstances." I said, "But you called me, you know, you you researched me, you called me, you got my number, right. so at least let me respond. I'm not gonna remove him from my program. He passed the background check. He came to the training. You know, he did everything he was supposed to do. Right. He's making a difference." I don't even think I'll be honest with you. I didn't even say a word to the to, to the guy. I did not tell him. I did not tell him that I even feel because Yeah, maybe, what good is that gonna do? Well, but then maybe he found a way. And I said, I said, um, what you probably don't realize is when he's having lunch with his mentor, he's also having lunch with his son. But that acrimony you spoke about, right? Right. Yep. And 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 so as adults, we have to understand. You and I, we may we may not be in agreement anymore. Fine, but we produce this thing. That's right. That still needs both of us. Right. I can't let my misgivings about you cause my son and my daughter to grow up with something that's within his or her grasp that I am denying them access to. Right. Because I'm mad at you. Right. You know because of how you treated me. Right. I tell parents this all the time. Um, and I say I say this to mothers. He may have been one way to you, but he's going to be something completely different to his kids. Right. The relationship is different. He may have been a very bad husband. And I'm not talking about abuse. I'm not talking about that. Like, I'm, I, no one should stay in an abusive situation. I'm not talking Absolutely. about like that. Right. Yeah, completely but, agree. But he may not be good at being a husband. But that, that child, no matter what you do, that child still is going to love him as, as daddy. And what well, well, a lot of times, with, um, and, and I hope I'm not going too far out of bounds, but I, I'll, I'll say it. And the thoughts and views expressed are those of Donald Parrish and do not reflect, <laughs> do not, do not reflect Mark, Mark Scroggins or, 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 or anybody, anyone else. But what I have to tell, I have to tell moms um, frequently is, yeah, I, I, know, I know you're, you're mad and you're frustrated, but sometimes the more you, you try to pull, push your, especially your sons, because you don't want him to be like their father. Right. You're creating the same situation that made their father the way that he was to you. Right. So maybe, and this is why we have to be mature about the situation. Maybe the way that we, the way that we, we best solve this is making sure your son or your daughter has a relate an equal relationship as much as possible with both sides of family, because we we don't know what God will do in a life of a person, right. and everybody has a right to be in a life, to be in the lives of their children. And and because honestly, a steady hand, I love a steady hand. A steady hand really should not be needed. If our society was producing the type of families that we needed to produce, right, then we wouldn't be needed. But it's because, but out. Frankly, that's too much work for us to do. We we will never go out of business at at, at the rate in which where we're doing because our society um, has not reversed itself, so to speak. Right. And and I, and sometimes I wonder if we ever will. Um, it's going to take a generation. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, because you've got so many that have grown up in that, and there's only so much that you can do. I mean, you know, look at what you're doing in Dallas right now, and you've. You know, in uh, the the call that we had earlier in the week or last week, yeah. Um, 
you know, talking about your expansion out to LA, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, coming up pretty soon. Yes, sir. You know, those are those are two really big markets. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, that's a drop that's in a bucket. Exactly. I, I, I was telling one of my board members. I said, I feel like what we're doing is we're trying to respond to a five alarm fire, right? Right. But we're having to, in our context, we're having to run to the Trinity River, right, or White Rock Lake, and we have a teaspoon of water. Yeah. And then we got to run two miles back. You know, to where the fire is. Make sure we don't drop that water, right? That's right. Dump it on there, right? And, and then and then run back with another teaspoon. Yeah. And that's and that's what it feels like. But we we have had some success stories. I'm not I'm not trying to say woe is me or anything like that. But it, it, this problem is massive. This is a huge issue um, that we and we see it reverberate in so many different ways. And all you have to do is walk on the school campuses in affluent neighborhoods or in a deep inner city and you will see what some of our teachers are having to deal with for my kids it does not matter their racial makeup their, their economic status etc there is a lack of respect that our kids have for authority and to me that's a direct correlation to not having an active father present in their lives most right. of the kids i can walk i can walk into a classroom and I can, and I, sometimes I'll, I'll quiz myself. Like if I can, if I'm just there observing, right? And and I'll say to a teacher, he has a father in his life, doesn't he? He doesn't. And, and the kid can not even be acting out. And they're like, "How do you know?" Because I've been doing this long enough. You can just tell. It, it is just obvious. The ones who have been, as we say in the church world, poured into, right? You can you can tell they they carry themselves differently. And that's that's really what, and I think that's why we have such a hard time for our our young adult women trying to find a mate to marry, right? right. Because they, because we got these guys who have been raised with missing a part of who they are, and they're trying to discover who they are, right? And yep. they're trying to, you know, they're trying to do all these things, and 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 they they can't figure it out, and they they wonder why they're not happy. Well, well, one of the biggest things there when you. <sighs> You know, one of the one of the worst things that that I see and that people don't seem to grasp is when you're sitting there dog cussing, you know, the the other parent in front of that kid, you're dog cussing the kid. Correct. And so that kid doesn't understand when you're sitting there, you know, making these remarks about, Correct. you know, what a POS Correct. dad is. Correct. And, and, you know, he's horrible and he's doing this and he's doing that and don't be like your dad and, you know, this, that and the other. All you're doing is you're tearing that kid down to tell him, you know, to take his self-worth down to a level that is the reason that you've got these things. So like all these right. studies that I was talking about, the likelihood of somebody going to jail, the Correct. likelihood of somebody having to, uh, you know, have financial problems Absolutely. throughout their entire life. Absolutely. All of these different things. Absolutely. Because they don't have the presence in their life that is needed. And on top of that, you're telling them that you don't need that presence because that guy is just a terrible POS and, and this, that, and the other. And that does so much damage, does so much damage. And I, I try to impress that upon all of my clients do not, do not, do not start talking crap about Correct. the other parent. Correct. You know, because one, a judge isn't going to like that because no. they've been educated. Correct. And they know. And they know. They know what kind of damage is done Correct. in that regard. But even more importantly than that, the kind of damage that you are going to inflict Correct. upon your child by doing that, you know, is is horrible. You know, I was um I got divorced from my my first wife when my daughter was was five. Okay. And one of the things I was very lucky about is that we did, for the most part, I think a really good job of co-parenting our, our daughter. There was no question of if mom loved her or if dad loved her. That's, that's awesome. You know, man. and we had behind the scenes, did we have some conflict at Absolutely. times? Of course we did. That'll happen if y'all stay married. That's exactly, that, well, <laughs> I mean, that, 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 that's, that's just, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, but people lose track of that yeah. and it becomes so much, you know, this relationship didn't work out. And so it's that person's fault. You know, it's, it's like people can't take it's separate. It's separate issues. It, it really is, but it's like people can't even take responsibility for having, Correct. you know, a part. I, 
in all the years, and I hate to say this, I've been practicing law now for over 30 years, okay? Wow. And doing primarily family law for over 25 of that time. And I have never, ever, in the entirety of my practice, seen a situation where it is 100% one person yeah. and 0% yeah. the other. It yep. just doesn't, it doesn't it does, work it that does way. It does not work like that. Yeah, it just absolutely doesn't work that way. So it amazes me when, you know, I see all of this, this tug and pull and, you know, and what it does is it just absolutely tears apart and harms this next generation that you wonder why, you know, there are different views being espoused and, Correct. you know, about marriage and why marriage Correct. has fallen off. And Correct. you've got now where, you know, somebody professes that they're a Christian or, uh, you see it more with Christians, in my opinion, than than you have it with other religions. But it's like, you know, you're stupid for actually believing. Yeah. You know, I mean, the amount of harm that yeah. is being done by that kind of BS Correct. is unbelievable to a me. Absolutely. And and I think that um, you talk about the negative stats. Here's a positive stat. And I think I shared this with you because I had just recently learned it when we talked uh, last week. Um, I was at a... Um, I'm a, I'm a part of a lot of family and fatherhood initiatives and things of nature. And so I, I'm always going trying to learn. Uh, science is now saying that a child in the formative years retains reading better when dad reads to him versus when mom reads to him. That's so weird. I wonder why that is. I, I And they don't, they don't really, they're still trying to figure that out. Here's what I think. Okay. I think number one, kids are used to hearing mom's voice. They had a nine month head start, right? <laughs> like, like, right. You know, like they right. literally, they know it. Number one, number two, dad seemed to be. And so the kid, that there's a tune out phase. If you think about growing up, you know, you know, mom would say clean room, clean room, clean room. But right. when dad say clean room, Oh, you know, room start, start getting clean a little bit. Little right. Um, but it's also, um, dads, we tend to be a little bit more animated. And so, Dad's doing different, doing voices with the character, you know, characters of the stories and this and that, you know, right. and, and the interaction might be less, but it's it's more meaningful. And then third, I think is our voices are different, like the That's tone true. and the 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 power and the clarity of our voice is different than mom's voice. And so I think all of that works on a biological level, but I think it's how God set us up and ingrained us a certain way, right? Right. So that because we do need both. If it, allow me to say this, pouring in right, right, and to build a healthy child, and and so what I tell families who are having this this struggle, this issue, and what I try to push out there is, if you really love your child, then you're gonna do what's in the child's best interest. That's even exactly if you right. have to co-parent with somebody who you can't stand. That's right. You That's can right. You, you can put that in a whole separate bucket, right? And we're gonna do the best we can do for this child. Right. And and if you do that, then then society is better. It's it's again, it's when we get caught in our own feelings and we put our stuff in front of the well being of a child. Once you become a parent, and this is why I try to tell young people, hey, don't run out there and live a lifestyle in a way that you end up producing all these kids or having all these children, because once you become a parent, all your stuff goes on a back burner. That's right. And they, they, because they cannot fend for themselves, you know, and you have to be able to and be, step up and you have to. So some of your hopes, dreams, and aspirations, it, not that they can't happen. They just can't happen a way that you thought they would happen because you produce something that is totally dependent upon you. Right. I mean, and, and so, and, and it is your responsibility now. Right. And, and so, and, and I think also. And I said this to, um, I man, I have this kind of conversation all the time. I said this to someone just last week. I said, what I really want women to understand, a switch gets flipped in a guy once he becomes a father. They're like, what do you mean? I said, you got to understand. During a time uh, when you're pregnant and the baby's coming, the baby's coming, it's still somewhat abstract. That's right. To a guy. It's not real. We know it's we know it's happening. Right. We see the changes. Right. Y'all change, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and how we deal with y'all changes, right? So right. we're we're getting used to that and all that. But you know, and we got the bag ready to go to the hospital and all that. Right. But it's not till that thing comes out and it's crying and you look at it that for for men that 
oh man, this is real. And typically with men, it's your, it's your first child, right? That's right. It's when you're like, oh my, like, like this is a real thing. Right. That's one level of it. Then when that baby comes home, right? Because the hospital, you know, they give you two, two, three days and you got eight, nine nurses helping you like, oh, this is easy right. until you get that baby home. And so, you know, I, I just wish that oftentimes I just wish that our ladies would understand that men play a vital role. We have to learn what that is. It is abstract to us, but it is just as important. It's, it's just as important as the one that you give that's actually providing the life and providing the nurturance and the nutrients. You know, it's still it. You need both. One is not more important than the other. You need both. So where do we how do we go about? espousing this, you know, because it's, frankly, it's unpopular. You yeah. know, you've got things right now talking right. about like toxic masculinity and all this stuff, which I think is total bullshit. Excuse yeah. my French, no, but right. you know, it just, anyway. Um, yeah. I mean, cause they're talking about abuse and abusive, uh, just call abuse, abuse. Right. But being masculine is not toxic. But it, 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 and it, that's the point. It's the whole way that you, you are basically, you know, saying someone being male and having very male masculine attributes is is a negative you know and that that's a horrible that's a horrible thing to teach kids mm -hmm. you know and it's not just teaching boys that it's teaching girls that so right. now you are you're taking this from a a place of authority mm -hmm. taking it down to a peer group Mm -hmm. who the peer group then is espousing this same thing. Correct. So who, you know, and once you hit a certain age, who are you listening to more? Correct. The the products of authority yeah, or, or, your or your peer group. And you're listening to your peer group more. And so Correct. if your peer group is sitting there telling you, you know, don't do this and don't do that because this is toxic masculinity and this is that and this is it. It's a horrible, horrible, you know, lesson, lesson Mm -hmm. to be teaching people, mm -hmm. you know? So anyway, I, I, I just would love to find a way that we could get this message out there. I hope that there's stuff that is being done, you know, more in the churches and, and. Well, I, I think doing what we're doing now, actually having common sense conversations, right? We can come from two different perspectives, two different viewpoints, but sitting down and having a conversation because we've lost um that ability i i actually thought in my naivety when social media really became a thing that oh man this is great because this is leading to more conversations and right. and you know we we can have difference of opinions but we can kind of arrive at at, at at what truth is right um but that's the algorithms of social media causes us to be in our own echo chambers right that's right and so then we're just reinforcing our own perspectives. I don't want yes people around me. You and um, me both. Yeah. I, I, I don't I don't I don't appreciate that. I don't I don't I encourage my kids, if you think that that is wrong, in a respectful way, let's have a conversation. My, all my kids have the right at any point to say family meeting. You know? I, family meeting and we'll, we'll schedule it. Well, it we'll, we will actually schedule a family meeting. We tend to, we hope to try it on Sundays cause you know, typically everyone is around Sunday afternoon or whatever, and we'll sit and talk. And if you call the meeting, the floor is yours and we'll talk about it. Like, and so I, I think for me, you, you ask what could happen. Um, I'm hopeful that what the work we're doing with a steady hand, um, and we hope to be, Within the next year or two, we hope to be in about 10 key cities. Um, what I'm hoping that we're doing is raising the standard of men and women, um, young men and young women, that in this, this next generation is able to have this conversation and this dialogue, but, but they have been raised a certain way, not a certain religion. We're not a religious organization. Right. We're not a, affiliated with any kind of political party, anything like that. We have some of everybody that, that works with us. Right. Uh, uh, and so, um, so I'm not, I'm not trying to proselytize or steer one way or the other. A kid just wants to be loved. A kid just wants somebody to kick a soccer ball with them. Like, That's like, right. I mean, you know, and <laughs> Hey, if you're going to meet me Thursday at the park at five, are, are you going to be there? Yeah. You know be there Thursday at the park at, at five. five. Yeah. And, and right. let's kick, let's kick the ball. Like, like just common sense. I think sometimes we get so caught up in buzzwords and cliches and this and that. 
that we forget that we forget the human element. And so my, the last thing I'll say about this, Mark, is I challenge people who who come from one perspective and they're so hell bent on that perspective. When's the last time you had a real conversation about someone who's the embodiment of the perspective? Because here's what I find. A lot of these thought leaders who think certain things, that they're, they're talking about something that does not impact them. That's right. And, and as, as, a, as, a, as a black man, I hear a lot of stuff about black men, right? I hear right. a lot of stuff about the black family, the black community. Right. Oftentimes, the main people who are saying that about black people are not black. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And and don't live in black communities. That's right. I was like, so when was the last time you had a conversation, and not just with one black friend, right? But just just put, put the word out. Hey man, I I want I want to hey man, go to your go go to your black friends or your Hispanic friends, whoever whoever you have this thought about. Right. Find people who don't have the same thought. Don't go don't go to echo chambers, but people right. have different thought. And let's go to lunch and have a conversation. Right. My, my wife is like, you are crazy. You'll talk to anybody. I say, absolutely, like I will. Right. Because I believe that's what we need to do. We got to have dialogue with people, especially with people who we disagree about. If we all can agree that we want, like let's, if we are gathering for the betterment of a kid, well then let's, let's have a real conversation about what, what you're calling toxic mas- you know masculinity is right are you are you just changing the word from abuse or or do you have a problem with a male led family okay well let's have a conversation about that right you know what I'm saying let's let, let's talk about that you know my religious beliefs are this i was raised this way and let's and, and he, saturday night live did the skit mark they stole my idea <laughs> cuz i've been saying this for years um the inner city black guy and the rural white former have way more in common than what they realize. Oh yeah. And I was telling my wife this and, and she, I was ranting and raving about it. And I was like, man, we're so polarized, right? Saturday night live did a skit with, with Tom Hanks and he was on black family feud, but he was on there as a white, like, as like, like a white rural guy. Uh huh. And he, and, uh, I think Keenan was, was the host. And and the black family and white family and and at at the end of the, the point of the skit was, man, like we got the same answers, right? We, you know, but I promise you, you go on your social media right now, right? You can if if you want to be mad about something, you put in that key phrase, and the next fifteen friend requests you're gonna have or Twitter followers or whatever is gonna be people who are mad just the same way you are and closed off on on the other perspective. That's right. It's the same thing when it comes to what's happening with our families and what's happening with our young people. Be willing to um, get in and roll up your sleeves. So I just tell people, when the last time you hung out in the elementary school that you grew up in, let's just keep it simple. Go back to your own neighborhood right? where you grew up. Go ha- have a meeting with that principal and say, what can I do as an alumni of the school to help? That, that principal first is going to cry. <laughs> it's like, right. Yeah. No kidding. You know. You know. Thank you. And this is what you can do. And then go in and just be a be a dry sponge in in the middle of the ocean. So don't no suggestions. Anything. Just observe. Just watch. And it will challenge every notion that you have about anything. It'll challenge it. And then you become informed. Then you can start working alongside those who are working with our kids on a daily basis. This pandemic has done a number on our children. No question. It has done a number on their socialization. They were already struggling with with social skills because of over-reliance on social media. Yep. But you layer that with the pandemic and it's, it, man, it is, and you can feel it. For those of us who are on, school, on, on campuses, you can feel it. And yeah. talk to an educator, they'll tell you. And a lot of educators are leaving in droves be, because of this. Yep. Well, now these kids are gonna be parents one day. Right. Right. How do we fix this? Yeah. We, we got to talk about it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Donald, this has been a great conversation yes, that sir. we have had today. Thank you so much yes, for sir. joining me. Tell people out there, how can they get in touch with you okay. and uh, and your organization to to be able to volunteer and to, to help with the cause? Okay, great. Um, so you can find us... Um, on social media, on, on Facebook, and you can just put in a steady hand. We're probably the most active on Facebook, um, on Twitter and Instagram, uh, be a steady hand. So we just added the word be in front of it, be a steady hand. That's also our website, be a steady hand.org. 
um, check that out. If you would like to, um, we have a, uh, of course we have a donate tab. We're, we're looking for, for monthly donors. I tell people skip Starbucks one day a month and donate that money to a steady hand that helps us as we uh, mentioned it because we are expanding. And, and if and in a couple seconds, I'll tell you some of the cool stuff that we're doing, if you don't mind, yeah, I'd love that. give a little shameless plug. Uh, but you can also go in and click and you can vo- you can volunteer and you can look at some volunteer opportunities. Um, you can email us info at be a steady hand.org. It's also on the website, but I N F O at be a steady hand.org or on Facebook. Send us a, send us a message on Facebook, either me or my admin team. We'll see it and we'll respond as quickly as we can. And we can, uh, we, we can, um, um, we, we can go from there. We are expanding to Los Angeles. I can say that publicly. Now we, um, um, honestly, I've been working on this since 2019, um, pandemic happened. Um, and you know, it, it I was like, man, are we even going to survive the pandemic? Let alone try to expand to other cities. Right. Um, we had expanded to, uh, to a small city, Wendell, North Carolina. Uh, so we were doing some work there, but we were doing it virtually. And so when they went back to everything in person, it kind of ended what we were doing there. So I'm still trying to figure that out. That's a very rural environment. And it's right. not like this. Our program really works in cities. I'm trying to see how do we develop it to work in rural environments. Right. And so, um, but yeah, we are expanding to Los Angeles. We'll be um, hopefully in a couple of elementary schools there um, in the fall. I know for sure we'll be in one for sure. We're working on the second one. Uh, so uh, we've already created a new logo and all that. And so we're really excited about that uh, to be in L.A. We have a couple other cities. I'm not ready to announce it publicly yet, but we have a couple of other cities that we're looking at. Uh, and we survived because of charitable giving. Like we, and like I told you, we have yet to receive any type of major, like life-changing for the organization, sus- sus- you know, sustainable funding. Right. We make it off of some awards I've received and people see that and they'll give speaking engagements, that kind of thing. Give it to organization. Like, I, Hey, give it to organization. And that's how you, as a founder and the CEO, that's, that's the role you have to play. Sure. Uh, but now it's the point where we're trying to add staff and, you know, having to grow and develop and you can depend on volunteers only to a certain extent, you know, some stuff you really need right. help with. And so, but uh, I'm really excited. You look at our logo and our logo is my hand. I changed it during the pandemic, right? Right, as pandemic was starting. And so, and what's so funny, if you pay close attention on the ring finger, you'll see the outline of my of my wedding band because I because I drew it on my iPad. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I had a young man who's an artist take it and 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 work it. So you'll see what our five key uh, points are. So I won't give you the whole spiel, but you can look at it. But I'm really excited. Um, our, um, middle finger is sports and we are doing some crazy things in the world of sports. That's That's e-gaming. We have an e-gaming camp that we're doing in partnership with right. Dallas college. Right. Uh, that as soon as we leave here, I'm, I'm, I'm rushing there. Uh, uh, th- we're in day two of that. Uh, we'll, and we'll do that through the month of July. We're so excited to partner with, uh, Provost Seabrook, um, his, um, his number two, Dr. Nicky Caesar, Dr. Nikki Caesar and Cedar Valley college, a part of Dallas college system. Thank you guys for opening your doors and hosting us. Um, some young people are learning some business and finance skills, even public speaking while they're playing games. It's, it's amazing. Like this whole concept. And, and so, uh, so yeah, so I'll, I'll you guys are welcome. Come check it out. And we'll, we'll tell you about all that. We're, we're expanding that, but we're also getting into team sports. I don't like what I see in the realm of some of our youth sports. Right. Uh, they kind of chew up and spit out the kid and don't work with the whole kid. Everything we do is layered with mentoring. We are a mentoring organization. That's what right. we do. But we do other things as well. Um, and the only other finger I talk about, because we I know we have to wrap up, is uh, my, pink, my pinky finger is collaboration. And that is so key because while we are designed to work with now with kids from any background, any ethnicity, et cetera, there's only so much that we can do. We don't specialize in mental health. So if I have a kid who, okay, they're not acting out because they're, they're, you know, this or that, this is a mental health issue. I need to have a collaborative partner that I can refer that kid to in that city, in their neighborhood, so that 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 child (laughs) can get the help that they need. I don't believe in trying to be the the one-stop shop. Right. That That does not work. So we're always looking to partner, and yeah. and so and so that's what we're doing. We're we, we're partners. So we do a lot of other things as well. So ch- check out our website. We we try to explain it there. That as soon as you click on the website, there's a little video about two minutes long, uh, that 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 kind of shows what we do. Um, and we do a lot of out of the box things. Really excited. We have a golf team that just started. You know, what I mean, we it's, wow, it, yeah, it's crazy. Like you know, we're 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 just we're just trying to 
we're trying to do a, a both and approach. We're trying to keep the kids attention long enough to where we can find an adult who's just willing to love them where they are. And last thing I'll say this, um, anybody looking to volunteer and to mentor, we primarily mentor during the school year. We don't ask you to commit the rest of your life. Give me one school year at a time. That's all I ask. There you go. One school year at a time. One school year at a time. Come on lunch. I mean, come on campus. Have lunch twice a month with your mentee. If you can commit to doing that, everything I can work with everything else. Just come bring lunch. Sit down. Have a conversation with your mentee. If we need, we have curriculum. We'll we'll provide the curriculum. But some of our relationships have been so great that the curriculum was, was slowing them down. And I was like, go. Don't even worry about the curriculum. You know, just go. Don, I want to thank you for joining us here today. And remember, everybody out there, reach out to Donald and his organization and see where you can help being in the kids' lives. Because remember, change begins with you. Don't forget to leave your mark.